So, weeks ago, I posted a video about starting a video blog. I posted a video blog about starting a video blog. Um, I really intended to start already. I haven't. I have ideas. I have, I have a topic lined up. I have notes, and I'm stuck. It's intimidating. It's really intimidating to put yourself out there to potentially be seen as some sort of authority or teacher, um, to be picked apart by people on the internet who can be a million times more vicious than they would ever be in person. And, um, and yeah, so I just got in my car. My car's running right now. And I decided to hit record and see what came out of it. <laughs> I don't even know if I'll post this. I don't know what... I don't know what I'm going to say right now. What could I talk about? Well, I just did a piece for 10 for a word. A piece as in a blog post. A 1500 word diatribe on the topic of abolition, abolishing abortion, and um, why why it makes no sense to me that any professed Christian could say that it's not their calling to join the fight against abortion, that it's a specific calling designated to one bold and courageous person. And, um, and I said a lot there that I won't repeat here, but um, I guess I would just challenge people to question the idea and let me know where you get the idea that um, obedience to scripture is a calling, or even that, what do you base the idea that it's not your calling on? How do you know that it's not your calling? Because I have a feeling that for most people, when they say it's not my calling, they're basing it on their fear and their anxiety um, when they think about the prospect of going out to a clinic or standing on the street and talking to someone or bringing the topic up in a conversation with a friend or a family member that they know is pro-abortion or speaking out um, more consistently on Facebook. Um, I have a feeling that there's a lot of fear behind it and a lot of um, I'm just not gifted in that way and I think it's the false assumption that the people that are active in those things aren't nervous about it um, the people that are active in those things that go out to the abortion clinics that they just get kicks out of it and it's um, it's not a gut-wrenching gut thing for them um, I can say for myself Every time I've gone out to a clinic, I'm absolutely terrified. And oftentimes I'll write my friend the day before um, that I go out with quite frequently and I'll tell him like, I'm really nervous about this. I feel completely ill-equipped and I've been doing this for almost a year now with them and every time I go out, I get nervous. Every time someone walks by me, I don't want to say anything to them. It's the same thing with evangelism, the idea that certain people are called to share the gospel and other people can just sit back and watch them do the work. Um, how do you know that you're called? I mean, is it really based on who speaks well or who has the best arguments? I don't, or the power is not in words or in arguments or in ability. It's, it's in faith. It's faith in God. Um, faithfulness in stepping out. So, I guess that would be just, I guess this can be like a teaser for, for what I, um, for what I wrote for 10 Forward and 10 Forward, I don't know which one they call it, 10 Forward or 10 Forward, um, anyways, I don't know, I would just challenge you guys to think about that, like how do you know that you're not called, like what is that based on, um, is it based on feeling? Because we're not supposed to trust our feelings in that way. We're not supposed to base our obedience on feeling. Um, we're supposed to base our obedience and our actions in the scripture. And I think the scripture does call for us to speak out, to be a voice for those who don't have a voice and to uncover the unfruitful deeds of darkness, expose them. And, um, and just to be a good neighbor, to love our neighbors, to love our preborn neighbors that are dying every single day to a minute. 
3,000 today. 56 million in the last 40 years in America alone with the church right down the street from these places of death. I would just challenge you to think about it. And and just I want to I want to clarify in advance when we say that it's everyone's responsibility, we're not saying that every single person is going to be out at the clinic with a sign calling people to turn away, pleading for the lives of the children inside. We would like to see a lot more people out there, but we're just saying use your gifts and your talents and your voice and your means to do something about it. Not to just disagree with it, but to do something, to speak out, to use your voice, um, to stand against it, to put yourself out there, to take a risk. We have to do more than disagree with it silently or just talk about it or think about it. Um, amongst ourselves there has to be more to it because we're losing we're losing this isn't stopping and even the pro-choice movement is is willing to compromise is willing to allow this to continue to be legal in certain instances and it's always murder it doesn't matter what the reason is or what the circumstance is <sighs> I guess <laughs> this is my rant I wasn't planning on talking about this but it's something it's something to post and I'm probably late getting back to work now, so I'm going to post this. I'm going to. I'm going to post this. I don't want to because I want it to be all polished and pretty and that's just not how I roll. So, all right. Bye.